Hello and welcome to week four, session four of Your Creative Self. Hello. We are at this week. Very exciting. A fox. Fox. Cool. Oh, that was nice. That looks like a cat. I like drawing yeah. animals. Selena's got an actual drawing tablet because she knew this was important. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I am a uh, 3D character modeler. Prior to that, I was a, a graphic designer for about uh, 10 years. My love of uh, Storm from the X-Men kind of transitioned me from doing graphic design to doing 3D. Think of Sesame Street meets uh, uh, robots, and that's basically what I'm doing now. So that started about a week ago, and I'm just getting my feet wet. So I'm the only modeler on the show right now, so there's a lot to do, um, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, that's some good questions already. Good questions. Keep going. So can you can you guys see my screen? Yes. So whatever I do on the computer in 3D can physically be turned around, can be physically printed. Um, if you look on the left hand side, that's the storm, which will eventually which this will eventually turn into. And then just a few other characters there. Um, so I, I try to get a lot of stylization within my work. Um, I really like to focus on characters of colour just because I think that there aren't enough right now in kind of comic books and in the, in the media in that, in that respect. So I do try to saturate the market as much as possible with characters of colour, um, characters with disabilities, able abled. Um, that's really what my kind of, my focus is. Really nice. Well. You have different body types as well, don't you? You have different shapes yeah. and types of characters. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of passionate about representing the, uh, the underrepresented. Um, so whatever that looks like, if it's uh, trans men and women, if it's um, differently abled people, I'm always really focused on giving a voice to, um, to the voiceless almost. Yeah. This is why we love you. That's great. Thank you. And, that uh, and your gorgeous personality, of course. Well, thank you, David. You want to pick there, a question? There is, there, yeah, there, is a quest, there is a question there that stuck out to me. Hi, Sai. I'm Rachel. Hey, Rachel. What okay. kind of led you to kind of reflect on your career and be like, okay, I need to make a change? All throughout my career, in, in every job that I've done, I sit down and I will ask myself, at a certain point, I will ask myself, am I happy with what I'm doing? Do I need to look at something else? So then somebody recommended ZBrush to me, so I moved into ZBrush, and from there, like, my whole world just blew open and I was like wow I can literally create anything I want anything I can dream of I can create that in ZBrush and that was exciting for me and then um, started doing that as a freelance so I was working on that just for fun as a hobby and then um, a couple of years later I applied for a job at Guru Animation and you know they looked at the work that I'd done and they were like, yeah, sure, we'll take you on. Um, so Storm, for me, um, I've just always connected with, with, with her through the X-Men comics and cartoons when I watched it when I was younger. Um, first of all, she looked like me in terms of she had the same skin colour. And um, I think, you know, uh, it, was, it was great for me as a kid to see that representation. Um, and it didn't matter to me that you know, we had a different gender or we looked different, or, you know, that didn't matter. The thing that connected us was what we shared in common. Um, and I think uh, looking at the X-Men cartoons and the comics and stuff, they kind of were a condensed version of reality where they represented marginalized groups and they kind of explored that in a very uh, a beautiful way that was able to be uh, understood by kids um, of all ages. I think one of the big things is important to find your voice in an industry which is so saturated with um, so many different people, so many different opinions. Um, finding a unique perspective is very, very important in order for you to stand out. And one of the things that helped me to stand out was the fact that I was doing something that not a lot of people are doing. So if you look at a lot of the, uh, the prominent 3D modelers, character modelers, um, they're, they're, they're not doing many characters of colour, they're not doing many differently abled characters, they're not representing uh, trans men and women. And so for me, it was important to be that person that was doing that, not just to be seen, but because I like to represent the underrepresented. It's something that I've always been passionate about, just because I thought that I was underrepresented. So I'd like to give that platform to whoever I can. Um, and so that was my way of creating a, a unique perspective and something that just, was just naturally within me. Find your voice and uh, make it a loud and proud voice as well. Like, I want people to see the work that I've put in. I want people to, 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 to you know, uh, 
to appreciate the time and effort that I've put in. And it's nice to have that mentality where you do kind of uh, put your best foot forward and show off sometimes. Like you put the work in, you put in the effort. Sometimes it's good to show off and say, hey, I did this thing. I'm really proud of it. Take a look. You know, people are a bit afraid to do that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. And I think I've definitely come into my stride now where I'm learning a bit more that I even share work in progress. I, before, I would never share work in progress. I only wanted to show the final product. Um, but I've learned now that me showing work in progress really helped other people um, to see that my stuff is not beautiful the right all the way through. It starts off looking absolutely crap. And then I work on it and I work on it and I get it to a point where it looks decent. And so sharing work in progress for me was something that I loved that I didn't love doing, but now I'm really enjoy sharing that with people. And it kind of, it, it's, it makes you a bit more vulnerable as well. And I think vulnerability in your work is, is key. The idea of faking it till you make it is a very real thing. Because the, they, they tend to seem quite happy in the Apple store, but then you wonder if that's because they're just terrified of not looking happy and then they get shot with a big laser or something. It's the satisfaction of having an idea in my mind and seeing it translate into the, the final outcome. Hooray! Uh, thank you so much for making time for us today. It was really great to no have you here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. That was so much fun. I loved that. Look, I imported the fox. See how I spent my time. But actually, the doing it comes before the feeling better about yourself. So it's only through the process of putting things out there anyway that you'll begin to feel the confidence to put things out there. I've said that before, and I'll probably say it again. The topic is about getting things out there this week. So I thought I'd see what Sophie from last week could tell us about this. So she said these things, because uh, she released an EP on Thursday after we saw her on Wednesday. She had an EP out the next day. Uh, she said she was happy with the positive response that she got, especially by people who she thought might not like it. And it gave her a needed confidence boost to begin thinking about the next thing to do. So through the process of putting one thing out, when it starts you thinking about the next thing, useful. And she thinks that's a mistake that people kind of make where they just like make a thing and post it once and then that's it. Instead, you need to find ways to keep talking about it. So it might be the post reviews of the thing. It might be that you have additional content or you have a video that goes with it or just like new things that you can put out that are to do with the thing, giving you an excuse to keep talking about the thing. And this is my list of points about doing the work and getting it out there. Just got to keep making things because that's what gives you the inspiration to make more things. You exist in a whole world of other people doing other things and being part of that. It's just good to be involved in stuff. Number two, put things out little and often. That's the thing about showing the process. Number four, persist, underlined in pink. If someone tells you to not do something because you're not good at it, like you could be like, oh, I should stop. But honestly, just don't. Number five, I put say yes as much as possible and ask for opportunities. Saying no is sometimes good as well, of course, <laughs> which is the opposite point. If you don't allocate the time to doing the creative thing that you want to do, it easily just gets chunked out of your schedule by everything else. Therefore, schedule it. I've already said it multiple times. Those fears exist. They're not going to go away necessarily, but feel them and then think, OK, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, that's good advice. Find your thing. Stick to your thing and do it kind of relentlessly in many ways, inspired by the example of Janelle Monet. And there's this quote from Janelle Monet, embrace what makes you unique, even if it makes others uncomfortable. That doesn't mean that you never change and you're always doing the same thing, but having a sort of clear sort of creative identity and doing that a lot, <laughs> uh, which can be in different forms. It can be in different media. It can change over time, but you're still clearly you doing that thing. But it only pays off if you spend a long time planting the seeds first. Yeah. Because no success is kind of overnight. It's always because you've laid a lot of groundwork and put in lots of things and attracted attention along the way. Not everybody likes everything anyway. You only need the people who are going to like your kind of thing because the other people don't like your kind of thing anyway. So when you're putting stuff out there and you start to get this feeling that like it's only like 5% or 10% of people seem to even like your stuff. That's okay, because five or 10% of a lot of people is a lot of people. And you might be obsessing about the fact that 80% or 90% of people don't even seem to like your stuff. Well, that's irrelevant. They were never going to like your stuff. That's exactly the kind of stuff they don't like. <laughs> it's fine. The good news, which it's easy to not think about when it's a small slice, is 
that that five or ten percent of people they do like your stuff and you should just be pleased about those ones and not worrying about the other ones the other ones don't matter they don't like your stuff anyway they don't like your kind of thing it's nothing personal they don't like that kind of stuff so forget them and just think about the people that do like your kind of stuff because that's a genuine community of people and it's a small percentage of all people but a small percentage of all people is still a lot of people because there's eight billion people in the world or whatever so um so the small percentage of people is still good. It's not a failure. It's actually, it's just your niche. So that works. I like that point. <laughs> there might be a, a thousand other communities that aren't interested in your thing. That's fine. As long as you find the community that is interested in your thing, because that's the only thing that counts. Create the step that gets it noticed. What we tend to think is, this is the one, two, three steps, right? So at the bottom is the job of just making good stuff. And at the top of the staircase, there's the thing which I've called impact here, which is basically people notice it, people like it, and it does well, and that's all good. And what people, I think, don't always realize is that between those two things, making good stuff and it finding its place in the world, there is a step in the middle, which is getting it noticed. And the point here is these are both your work. So it's not just that you need to make good stuff and then hope that something magic happens and then impact because magic doesn't happen. The step is a step in itself. It's a separate step, which is about getting it noticed. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you, David. See ya.